Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, bless. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, O daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As always, let me start the video by saying thank you so much to all of you for your support, your time, contribution, and hopefully you'll always learn something new from what we put together in this channel for all of you. For this video, we're going to talk a little bit about exotheology, which is basically the examination of theological issues as they pertain to extraterrestrial intelligence. St. Padre Pio of Pietralcina was asked by one of his friars, some people say there are Martians on other planets. Is this true? Padre Pio stating, Ebbe, voi che non esistono, certamente che esistono, e alcuni di loro sono senza peccato. In Italian, he replied, Of course, why do you not want them to exist? Of course, these beings on other planets exist, and some of them are without sin. Before I go any further with the video, though, I think it's important for me to share a little bit about Father Joseph Iannuzzi. He is a Catholic priest, an exorcist, and a doctoral alumnus of the Gregorian Pontifical University, and has obtained five postgraduate degrees, with studies in medicine, music, anthropology, sociology, philosophy, and theology. And so a few days ago, I emailed Dr. Michael James, who owns the Divine Will Channel, a channel that's dedicated to exploring the gift of living in the Divine Will as understood through the theological contextualization of Father Joseph Iannuzzi. I asked for Dr. James' permission to make short clips of Father Iannuzzi's podcasts for this channel, and I'm happy to share this good news with you that Dr. James agreed and gave me the permission. I've been watching hours and hours of Father Iannuzzi's podcast for the past couple of days, and I even put some of the podcasts on auto loop before I go to bed. And I must say this, that I'm really excited to share some of the things I've learned from him. So anyway, now buckle up and let's get right on it then. The study of the possibility of extraterrestrial life in the cosmos. Because it has to do with invoking the name of Jesus as one who has performed many exorcisms and who has shared my experiences with other exorcists. I can attest to you on their behalf and mine that during exorcisms there have been expelled from people demonic entities that were neither angelic nor human. Let me repeat that. Several exorcists can attest to the fact that they have expelled from people that were diabolically afflicted entities that were neither angelic nor human. In the, in the study of exotheology, one encounters the reality of existence of beings who are rational and that have physical bodies throughout the cosmos that are neither angels nor humans. St. Padre Pio of Pietralcina was asked by one of his friars some people say there are Martians on other planets. Is this true? And Padre Pio replied, and you can find this, by the way, his response on this question, in a book put out, Catholic book put out, with the imprimatur and nihil obstat, official magisterial seals of approval, which mean nothing is contrary to the faith. Padre Pio stating, Ebbe, voi che non esistono, certamente che esistono. In Italian, he replied, Of course, why do you not want them to exist? Of course, these beings on other planets exist, and some of them are without sin. Okay, now this opens up a chapter to a whole different field of theology. And I know what may be coming across your mind. If Padre Pio says they exist, well, how does the incarnation impact them or affect them? The incarnation of Christ in human nature, and they're not human. How does the 
original sin of Adam and Eve affect them? Do they have a sacramentology? Do they have a ritual? Do they believe in Jesus Christ as the Savior? How do they coexist? What is their purpose? Do they have faith, hope, and love like we do? Do their the bodies go on to eternal life? And the list goes on. And I've been preparing a book on this very theme of exotheology for the past 15 years. It has not come out yet. Because I put it on the shelf for a while, due to pastoral obligations and other, other theological commitments, but also because I'm in the process of interviewing people who claim to have been taken aboard a spacecraft or something of this sort. And I've experienced these entities, including Catholic, church-going, faithful people. One is Sergeant Clifford Stone, who died within the last year. He was a sergeant for the United States military, and he physically had contact with them. And he talks about it in his book. And there are others. I, I'm, I know of, of over 350 individuals that have had this experience. And there are many more throughout the world. But I share this with you because it's not just Padre Pio that speaks of this. Other church fathers and doctors do as well. And many Catholics don't realize this. They talk about the reality of their existence. Nonetheless, it does not impact us personally, this reality, in our, in our faith journey, nor in our spirituality. It does not. But I mention this in passing because when these individuals I know claim to have been abducted, invoke the name of Jesus, the abduction stops on the spot every single time. Over 1,000 documented cases where when an individual was being abducted and they called upon the name of Jesus, the abduction stopped, which means these are not good beings. Now, I know what you're thinking. They're, they're fallen angels. No, they're not. And I know people have claimed that, but that's not true because they're physical bodies and angels don't have physical bodies that die and then go on to an eternal place like these do. But um, I don't want to go into this theme, but maybe one day, if it's necessary, spiritually, theologically, I can address it. I have addressed it once or twice in um, random meetings, but I never address this really publicly, per se, because, it, again, it doesn't have to do with the gift of living in the divine will. But nonetheless, it's good to know because the church fathers and doctors taught about this as well, several of them and several saints, as well as the Virgin Mary and certain apparitions. She has spoken of this as well. But nonetheless, the name of Jesus stops evil attacks. Now, to conclude this theme on exotheology, I'll say this. It is from my studies, from the Eastern and Western church fathers and doctors and saints and mystics, I've come to the conclusion, based on their writings, not my own theories, that when Lucifer fell, as the book of Revelation reports, he took a third of the stars with him. And that's what the book of Revelation states. It does not state a third of the angels, but a third of the stars. And the star is the center of a galaxy that has life. A solar system that has life. Our star is the sun. So according to them, and according, and I believe this very much, that a third of all rational beings in the cosmos fell. And this may explain for the evil abductions. Who knows? I always say to people that we should be humble enough to admit that we don't know enough. I think in a way I'm saying that from my own personal experience, because I used to think many years ago that there isn't anything really new to learn about our faith, of the church, about Jesus. So in a way, when I say that to people, I'm always trying to remind myself that there's so much I don't know and I will tell you this, that it's a great comfort to know that I can learn so much more from the writings of the church fathers, the saints, from these priests like Father Lampert, Father Carlos Martins, Father Yanuzzi, and many more. I don't have to reinterpret the Bible according to my own understanding when the church has done so for us all. 
It's something that kept on hitting me whenever I read some of the comments written by Protestants. On one hand, their comments look ignorant and full of assumptions. But on the other hand, it's an opportunity to plant the seeds and with the grace of God, they will one day come to see the truth. And so, for the last part of this video, I'll be sharing an audio clip of Monsignor Rossetti praying for us. One of our afflicted people had a, a spiritual experience recently. He said that uh, a spirit appeared to him and said it was his guardian angel. And uh, he interacted with the spirit for a few moments, and but then started to wonder. So he said, tell me, does Jesus love me? And the spirit said, no, Jesus hates you. And then he knew it was not a guardian spirit. It was uh, the evil one. I've been saddened recently to hear how many people are suffering with these internal feelings of self hatred and self-loathing. This does not come from the Lord. It comes from the evil one. Jesus loves you. God loves you and forgives you regardless of your past. So let's say a prayer now to cast out those evil spirits of self-hatred. So here's a, a shortened version. So repeat after me. In the holy name of Jesus, I know that I'm a beloved child of our Heavenly Father. May the precious blood of Jesus cover me. In his most holy name and covered in his precious blood, I bind all evil spirits of doubt, fear, despair, unforgiveness, unworthiness, and self-hatred. I renounce you. I reject you. I rebuke you. And I cast you out. Again, I renounce you. I reject you. I rebuke you. And I cast you out. Now I'll say, I invoke the keys of St. Peter and the authority of the church, and I command the evil spirits of self-doubt, self-hatred, despair, unforgiveness, all these evil spirits to leave and never return. Exiabea nux antaras, ioti commando, nami dami nostra Jesu Christi. I command the evil spirits to leave you. I pray the blood of Jesus would wash over each and every one of you. May the blood of Jesus wash over your mind, the blood of Jesus wash over your heart, bring you a deep, deep sense of healing and peace, casting out the darkness, bringing healing and peace. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, may you be at peace. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in God's peace. Well, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for being here with us, for your time and endless support. I can't thank you enough. For those of you who'd like to support our works, I left the donation to our PayPal donation down in the description box below. As we are doing this full time, it truly has been an amazing journey of discovery, humility, and learning from putting all of these things together. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you. Don means, in, it's, a, it's, a, it's a diminutive, a nickname for Lord. So, for example, when you see a priest, you say, father or reverend, right? Well, back in the day, they would call a priest Don, which is short for Lord, in Latin, which is Domino. You make Domino short, it becomes Don, like Don Scotus, right? Don Bosco. Well, you have Don, right? That means Lord. It's a sign of respect, like Sir.